the work that I've done suggests this roller coaster crash, and uh, it is typical on a roller coaster that you go to the highest peak just before the greatest fall. Hi everyone, I'm joined once again by Adam Taggart, and uh, Adam recently did a wonderful interview on his Wealthy On channel with David Hunter about uh, the what, what's going, what David Hunter sees in the future, and it's quite interesting because uh, you know I've talked about the roller coaster crash before that we are on this roller coaster crash where you've got the threat of deflation, you've got an inflation and the markets go along with the inflations and deflations. And, uh, and David Hunter believes there's going to be a huge melt up followed by a huge crash. One of the things I do want to point people to is about a year ago, I did a video uh, comparing the 1929 stock market crash to today and showing the eerie similarities that happened throughout the late 20s and then all the way uh, you know, into 32. You know, to paraphrase Winston Churchill, the further you look back into history, the further into fu the future you can see. And so, uh, you know, you really have to look at history. History, they say, I believe it was Mark Twain that said that history never repeats, but it often rhymes. Uh, and uh, I am fond of saying history always repeats, but with little twists. And those little twists are based on the underlying fundamentals of the situation. So if you look at the fundamentals of what was happening in the stock market, what was happening in the economy, what was happening with the government and Fed policy and so on back in the 20s and into the 30s, and, and you study different moments in history with what they're doing with the currency supply and so on, uh, as compared to what is happening right now. Those little twists are going to make up the differences, the reason that history rhymes, but doesn't exactly repeat. It repeats with a twist. And uh, so uh, uh, I think we'll just move on to these charts here. Uh, the first chart that I've got is the blow off top that you're talking about here. <clears throat> now, uh, we're talking about just a few months here. So from late May, May 27th, uh, you've got uh, June, July, August. So this is a, a, a little bit over three months uh, of data. And you're talking about going from, th this is like a, this is a, a quite an enormous rally from uh, 191 or 193, I believe it was, uh, up to 381. Uh, this is an amazing percentage gain. Now I'm going to back out a little and go to, to start this chart at 1928. So you can see that that blow off top, if you look at the low in May of 29, uh, that's what we're talking about. There was another big rally before that and, uh, uh, and then a consolidation. But uh, from, in, from late February of 28 to early September of 29, you're talking about a doubling. We went from 191 to 381. Uh, this is uh, enormous. And uh, the euphoria that they had back then was very similar to the euphoria of the stock markets today. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Then, you know, that's September 3rd, uh, is that chart. The next chart is the 18th of October. And you can see that uh, there had been a pullback. This was not the crash yet. And it sort of developed a little head and shoulders pattern, which is interesting. And then over the next nine calendar days, now these are calendar days, nine calendar days could incorporate two weekends. So this is a maximum of seven trading days, but possibly as little as five trading days. It crashed all the way from that 333 points down to 230. Uh, this, <laughs> this was so blindingly fast. It's an enormous crash in a very, very short period of time. And then um, the day after that is when uh, the author, that was on the 29th, this headline 
of Brokers Believe the Bottom is Reached is on October 30th, the next day. And so the, the crash had stopped, there was a bounce, and, and that headline was written on October 30th. The next chart here is November 13th, but October 31st, the very next day, was where the Dow peaked and then rolled over again. So that prediction, that headline was true for 24 hours. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> and then we had a five month rally after the, the this temporary bottom of 198 was reached. Uh, so you've gone from uh, 380 uh, to 198 and then a rally up to 294. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.